So what I've got here is a Borg Warner SXE S363, which is basically an 87 millimeter compressor turbo that'll do like 78 pounds a minute. So this is pretty much, well, it could be an 800 horsepower turbo, probably not, more like easily 700. Um, but these are a really popular turbo on like rotaries and things like that, purely because of their size. Um, T4 twin scroll housings, which is obviously super popular when you get into the really big stuff because you want, a, you want that twin scroll to drive that big turbine wheel. Um, but it's just interesting to get one out on the bench and look at it in comparison to something that is also kind of considered to be a big turbo. So this is one of the EFR 6258s for Sam's Skyline build that we're doing. So this is a 62 millimeter compressor, which is obviously quite a lot smaller. Um, this is, you know, this is pretty much a, a 350 horsepower turbo really. Um, and, you know, it is still considered to be quite a big turbo you know, in, in kind of compared to OEM types. But when you compare it to something like this, um, an S300 series, you know, it looks tiny. The, the, one, of the, one of the best things about these is actually the cost. Um, now, they do actually do an even cheaper version of these turbos. So this has got like a billet wheel in it, which is basically the same as an EFR compressor wheel. Um, and it's got some other kind of EFR type bits but the, you know we've, we've done videos on these turbos before these are basically just a watered down efr so they're just a journal bearing version um you know with slightly less fancy bits you know um i guess if you're from the voxel world this is the sri turbo <laughs> compared to a vxr um you know it's pretty much the same um but you know it just doesn't have all the fancy bits but for a road car you, you know you really don't need a ball bearing turbo it's it's money that you're never going to see the, the benefits of. As long as you're doing, you know, as long as you're actually looking after the car, looking after the turbo and regular oil changes and things like that, there's nothing wrong with a journal bearing. Um, you know, most cars have a journal bearing turbo in them and they do hundreds of thousands of miles. And obviously, if you're putting something bigger on, the chances are this turbo isn't really going to be as stressed as what an OE type turbo would be either. So we did, we did a, a kind of a quick walkthrough of the um, S series or SXE series turbos when we got one in for Justin's but we got one in because we need it for another project so I just thought we'd look at it it's pretty much the same as an S200 you know marm and flange you can get different I mean when we did the other video we had a few people commenting saying um, you know you can get different housings which you can but they're not genuine Borg Warner housings the only genuine Borg Warner housings you can get for the S300 series are basically T4 twin scroll with a Marmon flange. Um, so yeah, you you are limited to that. You know, a few people also said, yeah, you can machine it into a V-band or you can weld a V-band on. And yes, you can do all those things, but they're things that most people aren't going to be able to do at home. So you are limited to that Marmon flange, but obviously for what we're using them for. Um, I think in this application, we probably would actually modify the turbo. But again, as we've now kind of experienced on Justin's car, there, does, there doesn't really seem to be any problems with using the Marmon flange. It's certainly not the best, but it's, you know, it's, uh, it's not terrible either. When you're looking at the S300 series, so SXE, you know, three, whatever, um, these are different to the S200s in that these have a T4 twin scroll flange. So these are exactly the same as what a T4 flange should be. Whereas on the S200s, it's a T4 bolt pattern, but with a much smaller T3 style opening. So you have to, you have to kind of port out the turbine housing to make them fit right. Um, you don't need to do that on the S300s. So these are, in in my mind, you know, if you're looking for like five, six, seven hundred horsepower on a road car that's very rarely going to see the track, or even if it does see the track, um, you know, these are totally the way to go. They are quite heavy because they're you know a full iron construction, so you know it's um, you know we've got no stainless steel turbine housing, 
Um, you know, it's an iron core, not like an EFR where you get an aluminium one. You know, if you were to compare these two turbos in terms of weight um, without measuring them, you know, I'd say this, this one, this EFR, although it is a smaller turbo, it's probably like half the weight really. Um, but yeah, you have got a much bigger turbo here, so inevitably it will weigh a bit more. They all have a 2.5 inch outlet on the compressor cover, which is handy because most people are running 2.5 inch boost pipes and what most people do straight away is just step up the size. So most people will come straight out of a two inch compressor cover and, and uh, slip it straight up to two and a half inch for the boost pipes. Um, it does seem to be that that's how most aftermarket turbos are. Again, all the Garrett's up to a G3900, I think have a two inch outlet which again it's just a bit more oe really you know it's a it's a bit of a better size so one thing these do have is the anti-surge in the compressor cover now one thing that some people do with these is the t51r mod I'm not sure where the name comes from put it in the comments if you know but they basically plug up that and then machine it out so if there's no anti-surge it just becomes a lot louder you know they're trying to make the induction of the turbo much louder um, uh, you know, if that's what you're into, great, but I, I'd much rather use it the way Borg Warner designed, you know, they do know quite a lot about, um, you know, turbo design, they've been doing it for a long time and they sell millions of turbos, so yeah, I'm not into modifying turbos really. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's, uh, you know, it's super basic, that's what I love about these. Um, you can get loads of different AR options on the turbine housing, which is nice. They do obviously so many different sizes. I think they do six different compressor sizes on the um, S300 series. So this is like one down from the biggest. They do, yeah, the biggest one is an S366, which is a 76 millimeter compressor. Four inch inlet on the compressor cover, which is pretty standard on a turbo this size. Um, and it, again, it's usually the easiest to, to work with. But yeah, these are a pretty decent turbo. So if you're looking for something that'll do kind of up to 700 and above, um, in my opinion, these are definitely the way to go. They are everything anybody needs from a road car turbo. I would also, you know, unless it was a full-time race car doing thousands of miles, it also wouldn't bother me to run one of these either. The beauty of them, is that because they are so low cost compared to something like an EFR, if you have any turbo damage, you know, it's going to cost, it's going to save you so much money in terms of repair and replacements. You know, th these are such a price that most people that are kind of racing semi competitively could probably afford to have one as a spare, sat in a box, ready to go, which is a massive advantage. It's why I'm a, such a big fan of these turbos. You know, for value for money, these, you know, can't really be beaten.